Let's see, what line is this? Hello. Good morning. This is Andy Crowner. Hi, Andy. How are you? Did I hang up on you just a second ago? I got a strange message, like leave a message. I've never, never got that calling you before. Hmm. Uh, ghost in the machine. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> I have yep. to uh, commemorate a funny post by Burl. After seeing what Biden has done in the last month, I want to thank him for not doing anything for the past 47 years. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Andy Crowner from the city of West Burlington uh, to talk about what's going on. Not in the Marvin Gaye way, but in the West Burlington way. A meeting tonight, right? Yeah, we got our normal meeting tonight. It should be a fairly short one. We don't have much on the agenda, but a few important items, including the final reading of that new, new no parking zone there on Ramsey in front of the elementary. Uh, heading just south of the elementary along the west side. So we'll get that done tonight. Uh, agency speed limit should be going up here. I drove it yesterday and didn't see it, but it should be any day. I am flying through there while I still can. You should. <laughs> not really, not really. <laughs> um, actually, you know, I, I guess I would say as a driver in town anyway, you kind of go with the flow of what everyone's doing. Like, the times you get in trouble are when you're the only car, like on Mount Pleasant Street, or, or agency is a good example, actually. Uh, it's easy to go too fast when there's no one to, you know, gauge what you're doing, especially if there's a good song on. Um, but when you're in the flow of traffic, kind of everybody kind of goes. And I found it interesting when you're talking about changing that speed limit on agency street that you guys do that same sort of measurement, right? That's part of, of what it is. You know yeah, what I mean? We have to do the measurement. That's part of our city code. And, you know, I think there has been a lot of development out there, and especially as you get out closer toward the gear and you've got the hospital and SCC and everything right in there, I think it makes sense. Yeah. That's what the data showed. Right. But, I mean, isn't it, uh, isn't some of the formula the – I forgot the terminology, but essentially the average speed that everybody's going – Right. You're looking for the 80th percentile. That's how fast it. 80% of the traffic's going. And yeah. it was going slightly over 35, but uh, not all the way up near 45. So yeah. when you take into account that data plus the you know everything else that's been built out there recently and the, the amount of trucks that are turning into Menards and those places out there, uh, I think it's time. And that's a good thing. It shows that we're progressing sure. out there and building some new stuff. Absolutely. And, um, and, and people have on their own. On their own, it sounds like if we're working with the 80th percentile, most people kind of they get involved in that active intersection and they say I better slow down. So, so make it official sounds uh, like the right thing, I guess. And uh, as soon as we hire some police officers, there'll be enforcement, right? You got it. And that's on our list tonight. We've we are accepting the resignation of two police officers this evening. Um, however, we are also looking at hire one hiring one tonight. A uh, good West Burlington uh, guy that uh, is a big part of the community, graduated here a couple of years ago, and his parents are involved a lot here in the community, too. So excited to have somebody new joining us. Super, super. That sounds good. Uh, but it'll be one year's time between now and actual, right, be, be, by the time you go to the academy and ride-alongs and do all the stuff you have to do. Is that about a good time frame? Yeah, it's going to be a couple months for sure before he would be on his own. And we are going to look at maybe hiring one more as well and have that discussion. Um, we did have one other officer just come back to us, so we would be at our normal strength just adding one. But we were kind of planning to have that extra. Right, right. Um, West Burlington Pool. I see that the the Burlington Pool was in the paper today for getting new diving boards or some such thing. I didn't get around to reading it yet, but. What are we doing at the West Burlington Pool? I remember we were going to paint the slides or something, and then what are the other things? Yeah, we did that last fall. And then if, for those that don't know, we actually contract out with the YMCA for our pool, so we're not running it. Um, we pay them a certain amount every year to come in and manage it, and they take the wins or the losses, and we just kind of cover the equipment and and uh, that payment to them. And that's worked out real well the last couple of years. And um, takes the city out of, you know, hiring and firing lifeguards and doing those kind of things. And you know, we're a pretty small town, so uh, partnering with the YMCA, that's been a big help. So, How long has that gone on? Uh, four or five years. 
So do they sign a deal a year at a time and adjust, or how does that work? Yeah, right now we've been going a year at a time. Um, obviously, last year we did not open with, with COVID, and that's the question before us tonight. They're, they're worried about what COVID is going to do to their numbers this year, um, which none of us can really tell. And so they're trying to see if we would maybe split some losses if they do happen with them. And um, they're looking at, you know, they handle the, the first $16,000 of losses if there are losses. Uh, we split losses 16 to 32 K and then the city takes anything over that. Um, historically, I think if we look back 10 years of the numbers, we actually made a little money at the pool every year. Um, if you're not looking at equipment, you're just looking at um, staff and mm -hmm. concessions versus selling them and, and getting money at the gate. Um, so it would really just depend on what COVID does this year. Uh, what was going to happen with that. So we're going to debate that tonight and see where we come out. Did you happen to hear Broker on this show today? I did not. Supervisor Broker uh, called in because I was curious about the numbers of vaccinations, and I believe the number was over 10,000 uh, having received in our county uh, already the first uh, dose at least and uh, half that, you know, uh, the second one. So uh, we're doing great in terms of getting people vaccinated. Um, I feel like uh, that's a huge number uh, in one county. And um, another, what, 4,500 have actually had the, the uh, uh, COVID-19 in our community. So we're, you know, 15,000 or so already aren't going to have it. Or you know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. and on our way to herd immunity, we're getting there. You know, we're getting there because – um, thousands more are happening, you know, frequently here in the county. So I'm, I really feel like we should be optimistic about uh, the summer and these kinds of things. But that's just me. I'm an optimist. Yeah. I, well, I think that's the the way to start looking. And I, I think you've mentioned on on the school basis, we are sending school uh, kids to school every day, and they're safe, and it doesn't seem to be uh, really spreading the virus there. So yeah, I think it it makes sense to be opening up and, and doing these kind of things. But I understand the why looking at it and going, hey, we don't know what the future is going to bring. Is there a way we can limit our losses here? Um, and, and they're doing a great job for us running the pool and keeping that open. So I think it's a good idea to talk about. I wouldn't mind tweaking the numbers just a little bit, but um, good conversation to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, what else tonight before I move on to the real estate thing? Anything else? Uh, we are looking at purchasing some software for the police that would allow them to kind of crack cellular uh, and other devices, iPads and things like that. Uh, it's about $10,000. It was budgeted uh, during this current year, so we talked about it a year ago. Um, and that's we're going to look at actually purchasing that tonight. I don't know if it's something we should do or not, but right now we— What, what do they use it for exactly? Thing. Like uh, in what in what instances? Somebody commits a crime, uh, pick up a drug dealer or something, and then what? Yeah, exactly. And if we want to get in their phone or other device, then we would use this software to get in it. And currently we're sending those up to the state. And what I'm being told is we're only getting those back and getting the data if it's a major case like a, a murder or something like that. Um, so basically in West Burlington, you know, we're not getting it. Um, other instances could be if, if the person passes away for some reason. And we have their their belongings, and you know somebody wants the pictures off the phone for the funeral, those kind of things. We we would be able to use that and get in. So, hmm. a couple uses, but we're looking at that. Do we currently spend more than the ten thousand dollar cost of this software to to do it now, sending stuff away to the state? Is there some offset there or not? From what I'm understanding, we're not really getting anything back from the state right now, so we're not really able to do it. Huh. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about that as a privacy guy, but uh, I yeah, understand. I think, send, uh, I think there was a place in Ottumwa where we used to be able to send these to and get it done, and that doesn't happen now. So, right. Um, right. You know, obviously there's there's cases where this needs to happen, right? You're, sure. You've got a yeah. drug dealer down the street, and you got them arrested, and you're trying to yep. get the dad out and get the rest. So and we're, know, it should be a good discussion. And we're talking about with proper subpoenas and or whatever the thing is called, uh, search warrants and whatever. Right. Uh, right. These kinds of things are going to be the rights will be protected. But once all of that criteria is met, then we have the ability to do it. Right. 
Correct. It gives us the ability. And, you know, I think one of the questions is if, if most police de departments don't have this, you know, are we going to be getting a lot of requests to do this for other places? I know that's something that we don't usually talk about, but it seems to happen every time we get a new, um, you know, kind of quote toy, right. um, something that we do that, you know, we were able to afford and do that maybe some other people didn't. So can we split it? Got to be wary of that. Can we split it three ways with the county and the BPD? And see, those are the things I like. We're doing that on things out at the jail and fingerprint machines, and I think we need to look at uh, other funding sources yeah. like that. It surely sounds a lot like a lot better deal at thirty three hundred and thirty three dollars. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is Andy Crowner, uh, who, by the way, works at Remax Realty in uh, beautiful downtown West Burlington, uh, such as it is, and um, they are the number one outfit around these parts and have been for a good long time. Uh, I see you've got a new listing on Adams Street, South Adams. Over by not too far from the Italian, a sometimes sponsor, a uh, good takeout joint. Yeah, that uh, house, 306 South Adams is the address, and it is completely remodeled. Every inch of that thing is redone, and you know, I tell you what, they did such a great job on it. You, you won't believe it when you walk in. It's only listed at 139.9, so just under 140,000, but you know, new flooring, new windows, new roof, um, brand new kitchen, brand new master bedroom, huge master bedroom, and a master bath, big walk-in closets. Um, just a gorgeous house. I do have a link on andycrowner.com. Scroll down to listings. I've got a, a link there where you can go see some more pictures. Um, but just a great house if you're looking for, uh, you know, kind of your first house or something in that 140 range. Um, this is the one, let me tell you, and it's going to go quick. And also has a three-year tax abatement. So you're going to wow. pay a lot less on your taxes the next three years. On so the house too. I see new metal roof, new flooring, new windows, new lighting, new front deck, new plumbing, new 200 amp electrical service. These are all high dollar restore, uh, re uh, remodels. Wow. Yeah, they really did a, a top notch job on on this house, and I think they do about one every year. And and everyone I've been in looks just fantastic. So, if you're in the market in that range, you need to be looking at this one. And I, I know I've showed it. It just came on the market just what two three days ago, and it's I've showed it a ton of times. So it's going to go. What would be a typical if I was a first time buyer and and this looks like a wonderful house to start because you wouldn't have to do any work to it? What would be typical numbers for something like this? Yeah, now obviously you always need to talk to your lender, but here's what I'm seeing from my mortgage calculator. Uh, if you just put 3% down, which you can get up to $2,500 from the state right now to help you with that, so that's going to take a lot of that cost. Your payment for just the home, just the home loan, might be in the 550 uh, under 600 area, and then you'd have tax and insurance on top of that, so you might be up close to $800 a month, and this is a brand new remodeled three-bedroom house so it's probably less than you could rent wow okay yeah that i think uh didn't we somewhere we looked at the average rent here and it was like about that number i think is that right yeah we talked about that uh it was slightly less than that but it, but remember that was taking one bedrooms and two bedrooms right and, um, so if you were looking at three bedrooms i know well, I know a lot of people that own rentals around here, and, and a lot of those are up around 1,100 even, um, but 900 plus for sure. So you're you're getting into a home cheaper than you can rent it. Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, AndyCrowner.com. Um, you've got the other end of the spectrum too, right? Yeah, Flint Crest, 5764 Flint Crest, down on the river, uh, just south of town. Um, yeah, that, that house is just amazing. A, a nice outdoor pool, uh, f five bedroom, five bath, um, just a huge house. Of, I mean, the river view on that house can't be beat. Um, again, there's a link on andycrowner.com to go see information about that house. But uh, that thing is gorgeous. It's going to sell to somebody. We, we've lowered the price quite a bit. We were at seven ninety nine. dollars um, It's down to 699000 So. I would expect to see that go here this spring as a few of those houses start to move. Andy will run a free comparative market analysis for you, show you what your home is worth in today's real estate market. This will be a lot more accurate than one of those online deals you do. Uh, and you can get it at andycrowner.com. 
uh, or by uh, he's on Facebook at Andy Crowner. And then, of course, you can always call out to uh, Remax and that kind of way as well. Anything else new in the real estate business this week? Uh, I tell you what, I can't get people in a house fast enough. It sells immediately. Mm. Whenever a house comes on, especially in that 200 to 260 range, you better be ready to get in there and look the second it comes on, or you're not even going to get in there. Uh, it is really flying right now. So if you're serious about buying a house, you need to have a good real estate agent. You need to know what's coming on the market before it comes on uh, and get in there quick. Beautiful. All right, my friend. Sounds good. I appreciate you calling in this morning and enjoy this unbelievable false spring we're having today. I'm looking forward to 50 degrees and I'm loving this sunshine. So thanks for having me on this morning. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. AndyCrowder.com is the uh, place to go to see that uh, starter home we talked about and also that uh, unbelievable. If I had any sense, I would try to get in that 5764 Flint Crest house. That is such a great. I got it. I, I can't get distracted by looking at the pictures of that now. It's too good. Too good. I'm not worthy.